Agency Block presents InsureTech Building Blocks, a new podcast that takes a macro look at health, benefits, and senior market InsureTech industry happenings and trends. InsureTech Building Blocks is hosted by Tim Robinson, Chief Executive Officer at Agency Block, and Corey Schmidt, CTO and co founder at Agency Block. Hey, everybody. Welcome to this edition. Actually, our, our first one, our first edition of the InsureTech Building Blocks podcast. I'm Tim Robinson, CEO of Agency Block, joined here today by Corey Schmidt, co founder and CTO. Corey, great to see you. Yeah, great to see you. Excited for our, our first foray into this, into this podcast. Maybe we'll start off with, you know, by the time most of you listen to this, or by the time you listen to this, we'll have celebrated Christmas and New Year's. But I know Corey and I and a couple other leaders on the team love grilling, love the, the Komodo Joes and the, and the green eggs. Corey, I know you've got a sizable family. So what, what do you guys have in store? What, do you, what are you thinking? What's going to be on the menu? Well, I just picked up a pork butt, so definitely doing that at some point to be able to, you know, have leftovers through the holidays, but also likely doing a brisket over New Year's. So I'm, my wish list has a fireboard, I think, on it. So hopefully yeah. that'll take all the guesswork out and keep the, keep the grill at the right temp so I can get some, some sleep and it can just cook overnight. So I'm going to hopefully be trying that out, assuming, assuming Santa Claus pulls through, so... How, how about it. you, Tim? Well, on the on the fireboard, you're going to definitely have to give a product review when when yes. we do the next one of these. Now we'll be doing a turkey, and then we'll be doing a beef tenderloin. So mm -hmm. and yeah, we'll we'll do a spatchcock version of the of the turkey, and then do a nice slow cook on the tenderloin. So excited about that. May have to sneak a ham in there as well. And just last thing, I, I don't know if you heard Bob, our, our product leader, he said it's great to do the shishito peppers on the Komodo Joe green eggs as well. So we'll we have to report out on that. That might oh, be on the nice. list. Yeah, I might have to yeah. try that. Well, let's move on to the world of insure tech. Um, Corey, you know, agency, for, for those that may not know, Agency Block, you know, it's, it's a business that's it's been around for 15 years. Corey and, and his business partner, Adam Lewis, started it. Now, was, was it officially Cedar Falls or Des Moines, or was it kind of coast cities? How, who would claim the fame there? I think Cedar Falls probably has the claim to fame on okay. original OG headquarters for Agency Block. Okay. All right. That's, that's, a, that's a great town. Enjoyed spending time there yeah. this last, the last week. So why don't you give us a little bit on the, on the journey? I think it'd just be great for, for people to understand the, the quick journey of Agency Block and kind of some of the things that you've seen in the industry over, over the last 15 years. Yeah, sure. Be happy to. Yeah. So for those that don't know the story, we actually started a uh, website design and development firm called SpinUTech prior to Agency Block. And, and that was actually kind of the, the genesis for what Agency Block became as a, as a business and as a, as a platform. We had built a, a couple of custom agency management solutions for some large MGAs in Iowa and kind of had the realization, you know, that there was a really interesting product play. Obviously, SaaS was really picking up steam in that, in that 2008 timeframe. And Adam and I also just realized that we wanted to kind of get away from the service business and get into something where we could really invest in a product long term, you know, continuing to invest in it, build the platform, get customers on board, and then just continue to expand from there. So that was really the impetus for Agency Block. And so we launched officially in 2008. You know, we, we tried the Field of Dreams approach, you know, where you build it and they will come. And it didn't quite turn out that way. So we realized we had to you know, invest in the, the team and really build the company from there. But we actually hired our first full-time team member in 2012, you know, and, and I think from there, it, it really, things just started to take off, you know, word of mouth amongst our customer base. And even though we built it for MGAs and that was really the, the core, you know, co the ideal customer profile starting out, we really gained a lot of traction with the retailers, like the small retailers that were just trying to move from spreadsheets or managing their business in, in Outlook and things like that to a, a true, you know, agency management solution that could solve, you know, much more of their needs. And so 
incredibly fortunate just to have a, a team that really invested in our customers' success and we always really kept the customer at the center. And so a lot of our growth was you know, 99% inbound over the, you know, over the 10 year time period where we, you know, expanded from a, a few hundred customers to, you know, today approaching 4,000 on our AMS, you know, solution. Obviously we have customers on some of our other products as well, but, you know, I think it just proved out if you just keep this, the customer at the center and just continue to invest and, and make them more successful, you know, they're going to continue to, to, to want to use the product and, and really be great partners with us as we continue to invest in, in, in what we're doing here at Agency Block, which I'm sure we'll talk about kind of some of the things that are coming out next year uh, for those customers. But really a great story. Obviously, today we have, you know, about 120 team members and across all the products, you know, around 6,000 customers. And, you know, a lot has changed since 2008, you know, when we started this. But just incredibly fortunate to get to this point. And, you know, you hear all the stories about starting a, starting a business and we had our, we had our fair share of failures in there as well before, before agency block, but just incredibly fortunate to have the team that we do today and, and such a strong devoted customer base as well. It's uh, it's funny how a quote unquote overnight success takes 15 years to happen or maybe 10 years, right? Whatever it is. But it is, I think it is great. The agency block team, you know, prior to my joining here just a little while ago, really did a great job staying focused on the needs of the, of the customer, to your point, and not deviating away from that. And I think over that time as well, like similar in, in other service industries, there's, there's been a real benefit to technology, right? To adding, being able to be more efficient in managing the business, being able to scale sales as well. But then there's also the, the end customer, the client, that that's just an expectation, right? That if, if I'm going to buy a product or a service from you, you got to communicate with me the way that I want to be communicated with, and you're going to deliver it in a format that I want to, that I feel like I should consume it in. And I, I think that's probably an important piece that's transition as well. I'm sure 15 years ago, it was a lot of sitting at the kitchen table or whatever it might be talking about these insurance products. And now what we've seen is you can do it over the phone. You can have video sessions. You can do screen shares. There's a lot, a lot of different ways that, that agents and brokers can effectively communicate and, and assist their, their customers. Yeah, certainly the the demographic of our customer base has shifted over time, you know, both as a result of the, you know, some of the, you know, a lot of the producers retiring and, and younger folks getting into the industry, but also the the thing you mentioned, Tim, with just a the shift that's happening to, to adopting technology and re- really leveraging technology to make yourself, you know, more scalable as an organization and, and more effective. I think the maybe one of the most exciting times, this might sound strange, but most exciting times in our history was we had a, a brief outage in 2020 during AEP. And I think that it really makes you realize how reliant folks are on technology. And obviously, you never like to talk about outages, especially as the CTO of the company. You don't want to tell people you had an outage. But I think it, it was evidence of the importance of the product, of the platform to the everyday operations of our customers. And when you realize like the first thing they do when they get to the office is, or when they get on their computer in the morning is they log into agency block and it's probably the last thing that they, they log out of every, every night. That's really when you realize like how important you are to your customers and how important it is to, to live up to that commitment. Yeah. I love, I love that example. And uh... We haven't had an outage during AEP, so let's, you know, that's disclaimer, right? So, uh, that's right. So- I, think, I think AEP technically ended a few days ago, so I would, you know, I know there's SEP that goes through mid-January, yeah. but yeah, I think we, we we breathe a little sigh of relief every year we finish right. AEP because it is, you know, it's go time for a lot of our customers. That's right. That's right. It's, and, you know, so, so rewarding, so powerful to be such a integral part, right, of our customers and, and how they can meet the needs of, of their end clients or customers is just really, for, for me, really rewarding knowing that we fit right in that 
value chain and that ecosystem. And, you know, the expectation is that we're making it easier for our customers to provide services and products to, to their customers. We're making them more efficient, right? More operationally efficient, so more profitable in the end. But we also, some of the exciting things that we have coming up here in 24, we're also going to be enabling the sales, right? Even more, there's, there's always been a portion of that in the product, in the core agency block product, but man, there's so much more coming out in 24 that we're going to really help our, our customers really grow and, and be able to do it in a tech enabled fashion. So do you want to yeah. talk a little bit about that? Oh, yeah, I would love to. I mean, it's probably the biggest evolution of our platform since the beginning of Agency Block. You know, we started more focused on back office and really policy management, you know, servicing of the customers. And a little bit, about a year ago, we had the opportunity to to get close with the team over at Radius, Clue and, and Danielle and some of those folks and really understand how they had been really successful on kind of the other end of the market, which is more of the front office supporting kind of the lead management, sales enablement, you know, managing closing leads. And, and that was something that, that we hadn't really invested in quite as much in, in the agency block platform. And so for those of you that don't know, we acquired Radius December of, of 2022 and really quickly recognized the value of bringing the products together. And so we've spent the the majority of the last year almost entirely focused on bringing these platforms together. Just a really compelling kind of value proposition for our customers is, you know, how do I manage my leads? How do I grow my business? And that's a, a theme we hear pretty frequently when we ask, like, what's the single most important thing to your agency? And so really excited that we're going to be launching the combined agency block solution that has the, the sales enablement radius components as part of it, now called AMS Plus. We'll be launching that in January. We've had some customers in beta, gotten a lot of really great feedback on that front as well. And this is really kind of the next evolution of the platform is really solving for the, the front office as well as we do on the, on the back office side. And it's all fully integrated. It's not, it's not two separate products that you're logging into. You don't have to go different places to do things like SOA. And if you want to do you know, calling and, and call recording and, and compliance things that are a big part of the, especially the Medicare market. You don't have to go to multiple solutions now to do that. You can do it in, all, in one consolidated platform that, that serves all those needs. So it's really been a, a fabulous run bringing the products together and, and making it all work seamlessly for the customers and couldn't be more excited about what it's going to do for our, our product and how it how it's going to, I think, make our customers more successful and, and help them grow. And I know, Tim, you joined this year, but, you know, kind of curious how, how, how you've seen this come together because there's been a lot that's happened in that, that short amount of time. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really been exciting. The, the reality is in a fairly short period of time, watching the, watching the teams, watching the organizations come together and really rally around this core purpose, which as, as you mentioned earlier, is the, the customers are at the center, right. Of, of everything that we do. And we think about the, the products and solutions that we, we bring to market. And it is just the feedback that we've gotten from, from those prospects and customers that we've shown the products to, as well as some other individuals in the, in the industry, I would consider kind of thought leaders and getting that, those perspectives. It's rare to have that kind of confirmation or affirmation when you go through this process to know that you're hitting, hitting the mark. So incredibly excited about that. It's rare that you can see a solution that really meets the needs of both the front end or front office, right? That sales enablement, engaging prospects, customers, doing all those things but then have the strength on the back end to manage the customers, the commissions, the policies, and it's, it does it at scale, which I think is amazing. The other thing that I get really excited about is our team members, the tenure of our team members and their expertise in the space. And when you talk to a, a support rep or an onboarding person or a sales rep or anyone else in the organization, they, they have a deep domain knowledge around the health and benefits and life insurance markets 
or segments, and specifically in how you can leverage technologies to be successful, right? Because we're having conversations, so many conversations every day about how powerful it is or solving problems. Hey, I'm not sure if you've seen this, but I'm trying to do X, Y, or Z. And just through the power of knowledge share, there's a lot of true benefit that, that comes out of that. So definitely always love seeing the feedback from customers through our, through our, our successes channel that we share internally and how exciting and customers are about, well, I really wasn't sure how to do commissions before, you know, certain elements of the commissions and spent time with, you know, this person. And I feel so much better about my business and where I'm at and ability to take on more customers. Mm -hmm. So that for me has been just, just great. I also truly like the, our, our customers or the end market, you know, as we, we talked about in the intro to the podcast, you know, I, I come from several different vertical industries, anything from financial advisory, P and C homeowner associations, property management companies, lawn care, pest control. Okay. I won't bore you guys, but like a lot of different end markets and what I really enjoy about this one. And it's similar to the, the financial advisor and PNC side is that there is a, a, a deep passion or concern for our customers to help their clients with their needs, right? Whether it's mm -hmm. Medicare, Medicare supplements, health benefits, life insurance, ancillary products. If it's helping a carrier show up in certain channels so that they can promote their products more effectively. That's just, that's incredibly powerful to know that you're, you're a part of that. Totally agree. And in fact, I think, you know, the, the most common reason that I hear folks that we talk to about why they got into this industry, it's because they wanted to help people. Like this is really an important aspect of, you know, of anyone's well-being is their, their health, right? Their health and well-being. Right. And that's, that's really where, you know, these products fit, you know, into that puzzle. And so I, I think it's really neat to see that, you know, our customers genuinely want to make people's lives better. And it's why they, uh, many of them got into this industry. So I think there's still, you know, a lot to learn from our customers as well. Obviously, we feel like with what we're launching with AMS Plus, we've, we've really listened and, and kind of delivered on a lot of that. I, I think one of our, well, our, our VP of sales, I think says we we're delivering seven of the top 10 customer and prospect feedback items with this launch, which is pretty incredible, but it, we can't stop here. Like we have to keep listening. And I think I, I'm pretty excited about, you know, us bringing on other folks onto this podcast as well to really understand like what, what's happening in the broader industry. I know that the last 10 minutes maybe sounds like more of an advertisement about the product, but I, I'm genuinely just a curious person. I want to understand what's happening in the industry, how how we can help, um, how, where we fit in. Um, you know, I think it's, it's, it's why we've been successful, but we really are partners with our customers. And so, uh, again, excited to bring on some other folks with different perspectives about what they're seeing in the market, both on the, you know, the individual and, and uh, senior Medicare side of things, as well as group benefits and what's happening over there. I mean, we have, we have customers on, on both sides, a lot of customers that do both, both product lines. So, yeah, I think it's going to be a I I look at this as more of a, a really interesting learning experience than maybe anything else. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. For those those of you who may not know, we added FormFire to the the family here boy, a little over a year ago, which is more on the quoting and enrollment side of things for group benefits. And that has been great. We've learned, you know, candidly as a, as a leadership team, as an organization, we've learned a lot about that end of the market or that segment of the market. And for me, it feels like we've evolved that product set and gotten it to a place that there's a broad, even broader appeal, um, driving even, you know, even greater value prop. So really looking forward to, to see that product set in the market, getting feedback from customers and prospects. And, and as you mentioned, finding, finding great market fit. If, if we're bringing products and services to market that, as we've talked about in this podcast, make a meaningful difference in the success of your business, then we know we've been successful. And so really looking forward to that part of the journey as well. 
Absolutely. Quote Plus is our new uh, branding for that that solution. I think that officially mm-hmm. launched this, you know, maybe early this summer. But yeah, and I, that we're also, you know, we're going to continue to invest in integrating the products across our platform as well, because I think that's important. Again, how do you how do you enable uh, your our agency customers to be more efficient, and obviously want to eliminate you know, places where they're having to enter the same data, do the same things more than once. That's, that's one of our, one of our goals is we will solve problems for our customers. And so we need to think about how to, how to do that. So excited that we're going to continue to invest in integrations across the product lines as well. So let's, let's talk about some perspectives here on the, on the industry from what we've heard. You know, one of the, <clears throat> excuse me, one of the great things is that we have a really broad and diverse customer base, right? We've got anywhere from large carriers, regional carriers. We've got small, smaller retail agencies. We've got uh, IMO relationships. We've got GAs, MGAs. We've got the whole alphabet soup, right? (laughs) And one of the nice things about that is it gives us an opportunity to have conversations, to get perspectives from different portions of the, of the market of the industry. And I, I think one of the, the, the things that we've heard is that this, this AEP season was, was strong in general, was, was a strong season. What, Corey, any, any insights or things that you'd like to share from, from some of your combos? Yeah, we're also pretty well connected with the, you know, some of the technology providers in that space as well, the quoting and enrollment solutions that those retailers are using. And I think all indications are that it, it's up sizably over last year. So I think that's that's a great sign, you know, for for our customers that are in the Medicare space. Obviously, they're continuing to grow their, their book and fi- finding solid products for their customers. And I think it continues the trend that we've we've seen. I think there, you know, there's a lot of data out there about the Medicare Advantage enrollment specifically and the growth there. I think it's it continues the trend of the of the past few years. There there are certainly some headwinds, and I know there's some things that we'll probably dig into on on this podcast around you know what's going on with CMS and some of the changes in that in that industry specifically, but. The good news is I think the the growth continues on that front. And I think it's probably why we see an outsized number of new agencies coming on our platform or agencies growing in that in that Medicare, in that Medicare space. Not not that group benefits, employee benefits is not still a really substantial part of the industry, but I think majority of growth seems to be coming from coming from the the Medicare senior benefits space. Yeah, that that certainly aligns with what I've read and and what I've heard in conversations as well. And you know, I think on the employee benefits side, there's just you know there's growth, but I I think over the last few years, it certainly has gotten even more complex just with having to adhere to certain regulations and stipulations. So I think the complexity has has gone up as as well, and. And I think there is there are some opportunities that we'd love to explore and talk to others about how can we help deliver content and insights to our customers and to the industry. You know, it's it's one of those things. If you have to go seek information, it's it's a significant bar or barrier. If it's delivered to you in a meaningful, timely way, it has a high you know high benefit or a high reward. So. I think we're we're going to be working on some pretty exciting things there to to help the industry as well. Absolutely. I think our customers often tell us like the the most beneficial thing about our annual we do an annual conference called Block Builder and it's evolved a bit over the years but one of the things that we often hear is just a chance to learn about best practices and 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 tools that other, you know, other peers are using in the industry and really understand how to continue to grow and evolve and be a be a better agency operator is is a is a common theme and I think that that fits right into that that realm Tim of of trying to invest in you know educational content and and content that our that our customers and even their customers would be interested in just to better understand the insurance products that are available and how they fit in and how they make again how they can make people's lives better all right well I think we've covered a lot here on the on the first episode 
Uh, yeah. I will be looking for uh, a review on the fireboard as well as on the outcome of the of the smoking. So, Corey, great to, great to have you here on the on the podcast. Really really enjoyed the discussion, and thanks everybody for listening. Please provide feedback. We, you know, we want to be the, this to be as interactive as it can be, meaning the content that we bring and the and the topics that we cover. We do have some pretty great guests lined up already, so we look forward to having you back for the next podcast. Thanks, everybody.